Happy Sunday, folks. So we are live from Winsport in Calgary at the Jones Snyder Arena, moments away from puck drop between the Calgary Inferno and Toronto Furies. My name is Sandra Prusina. Thank you for tuning into today's stream. We have a special guest. I guess I'm technically a special guest, but I'm not the VIP here. Carla McLeod, two-time gold medalist, joining us today for a little color commentary. So pleased to have you with us here, Carla. Looking forward to today. Absolutely, and, and thank you, and, and you are a VIP. Let's <laughs> not kid ourselves. So uh, the broadcast is really lucky to have you as well. And, you know, I think it's going to be, you know, a, a tough there, tough match there last night uh, and a quick turnaround here. So I think it'll be a big task for both teams to see who can come to the rink here with the most energy. And for people tuning in, actually, they didn't play in Calgary last night. They played in Red Deer, which is about an hour and a half-ish north of Calgary. So by the time you get to the rink, all that kind of stuff, uh, from what I hear from some of the people, they didn't lay their heads on their pillows till about midnight, and then we're here 10.30 Mountain Time. So like you said, a very quick turnaround for not only maybe for us, but for the athletes, which uh, it's difficult for them. It is, it's a challenge. Now, granted, they're top top players in the world, so they're, they're fit and they're, they're ready for this sort of thing, but I do think it could take a couple shifts here to, to get their legs going again. So we did mention boisterous crowd in Red Deer last night. Toronto played the role of spoiler, beating Calgary 4-1 to hand the Inferno just their second regulation loss of the season. Shea Tiley, she uh, took the win, actually. Julie's in goal for Toronto this morning, but Shea Tiley picked up the win for the Furies, stopping 23 of 22 of 23 shots. So first period underway, Calgary in their red jerseys. Leslie with a shot on goal, pass out to Brianna Decker. And we'll just talk about Calgary's top line. It's normally Rebecca Johnston, Zoe Hickel, and Brianna Decker, but Rebecca Leslie, the rookie, has been playing so well. She's actually on the top line for Calgary and a little bit of a give and go here in the Toronto end. Good chance on goal. That's a great play. And you know, you talked about Elaine Truly stepping into net today for Toronto Furies. And welcome to the game. A great save there and a high scoring chance. So just 30 seconds in. Face off win in the Toronto end. Allen will take it down. Gets hooked up in front of the Calgary bench. Played behind Annie Belanger. She's between the pipes for the Inferno this morning. She's 4-1 and one on the season. 1.73 goals against average. She did play last night. Took her first loss, actually. Greco plays it on the half board. Nearly kept alive at the blue line by Calgary, but they'll plop it back in thanks to Jenner. Greco, battle with Blair Turnbull. Laquette tried to keep it alive, but her defensive partner, Hallie Kurzaniak, will race back and will get an early icing call here, 0-0 in the first period. So, Carla, you're very familiar with both players on both ends of the ice, so both teams, let's say, on both ends of the ice, and a couple of players helping coach with you at the Edge School here in Calgary. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a small hockey community at the end of the day, and we're really fortunate at Edge School to have Blair Turnbull serve as an assistant coach this year. She's been able to attend the bulk of our practices and a couple of our games, and Brianne Jenner's giving back to the local community, helping with the Mount Royal Cougars. So uh, the efforts that these ladies give, it's tremendous, and, and lots of kids are benefiting in the Calgary community. Apperson plays it behind the net, looking for Turnbull. Greco snaps it up for Toronto then. Jenner nearly keeps it alive at the point. And we'll get a hand pass here just in front of the Toronto bench. So maybe what we expected here at the start, a little bit of a lack of rhythm. Uh, just takes a little bit here again, those quick turnarounds, it does factor in. Uh, I think both teams would like to be able to get that puck, make a couple clean passes and feel like maybe there's some flow. It's been a bit disjointed here the first minute and a half. Face off win there for Calgary. Decker takes it down the ice. Back to Johnston. Centering pass. Johnson with the puck now. Loses it to Darkangelo. She'll take over for Toronto. Nice interception there, though, by Bri Brianna Decker. Decker plays it into the corner. Looking for Gosling. She keeps it alive. Decker looking for some centering options. Gets it to Leslie. Shot on goal by Rebecca Johnston. She leads the Calgary Inferno in points this season. Recently named the team captain. Yeah, and, and a great leader and obviously tremendous career that she's had. Uh, you know, she, she continues to lead by example. That's sort of her forte. She's maybe not the most vocal uh, in the room at, at times, but in the same breath, her work ethic is second to none, and I think she leads that way. You know, again, you talk about Elaine Chuli, like it's been uh, two shots now, same idea from opposite sides of the ice, but just that nice little low to high play in the kind of the soft spot of the slot, and she's, you know, stepped up on both accounts. So I think if you're the Toronto Furies, you're excited to see that your goalie's dialed in and ready to go, because no different than last night, uh, that'll be a key. 
So Toronto's top line out right now. One of the top rookies in the CWHL taking the face off. That is Sarah Nurse, and she wins it. She's playing on a line with Natalie Spooner, the captain of the Toronto Furies, another very dynamic captain as well. Oh, sure. She's charismatic and, uh, you know, a big presence and, and is respected by uh, all, all of our teammates, certainly. I also have to say, if people didn't see Natalie Spooner's goal last night, please go look it up on Twitter because... I've seen a lot of CWHL games this season, one of the best I've seen, so check that out. I know it's on the Furious feed. Back check there by Spooner. She's able to get it to center ice. Calgary plays it back in, though. Jenner, that puck is deflected behind Shuley. Turnbull looking for a centering pass. Nice defensive play there by Channel and Spooner. Slap shot from the point. Jenner standing in front of that blue paint, looking to create some chaos, but we'll get an offside call as that squirted past the blue line. So you mentioned a lot of play here in the Toronto end to get things going. And, and, and that's somewhat expected, and it's okay. You know, it was fairly similar last night's game. Calgary carried the bulk of that game, but Toronto took advantage of their that's opportunities. Right. So at the end of the day, some, you know, when you're facing a team with the depth that Calgary has, you have to be okay playing in your own zone. Everything's been to the outside so far. You know, a couple scoring chances there maybe early on, but at the end of the day, I think if you're, if you're Coach uh, Castle, you're okay understanding it's going to be in our zone for a little bit. So 0-0 zero, zero here, 17.05 left in the first period. Calgary and Toronto, we are live from Windsport, the Joan Snyder Arena, part of the Windsport Complex here as part of Canada Olympic Park. Toronto now, outlet pass. That one goes to Dilden. And now Calgary with speed coming through the neutral zone. Nice stick check there. Howard. Plays it in on Ani Belanger, and she'll hang on. So she faces the puck for the first time this morning. I No doubt she probably just wants to get a sense for the puck. Maybe she's not going to be super busy, but she wants to be prepared early. No, I don't uh, I don't know much about goaltending, but I'll have to say if that's your first shot in the game, you'll take that any day. A nice sort of floater from far out. You can really feel it, absorb it in your crest, and, and you know feel confident moving forward. So easy first shot for her, for sure. Nice face-off win there by Toronto. Played behind the Calgary net. Calgary will take over though, gets it on the half boards and cleared out now with speed. Outlet pass here to Rebecca Johnston. She'll take on Chuli. Chuli plays it away, gets it out of danger and Toronto will now take over. Allen, Allen with some speed. Checked into the corner by Bellamy, bouncing puck. Bellamy plays it to the corner, back to Johnston and dumped back in by Julie Allen. Annie Belanger will hang on to that one. Gives it to her defensive partner, Johnston. Outlet pass to Decker. And now with some speed here, Caitlin Gosling taking on a number of white jerseys, looking for a centering pass, no one there. Sarah Nurse takes a bit of a dump into the boards. She recovers well, back up on her feet. And Calgary now with possession. And you can see Calgary now kind of settling into their style of game, which is a puck possession style of game. They want to own it. They want to wait, be patient for their chance. Turnbull inside out, looking for Jenner. Nobody's there. Nurse will take over. Turnbull, a bit of an interception. Bobbling puck. Jenner in front of the net. She likes that space there, always in front of the goalie. That's something I've noticed about her lately. It's so critical in the women's game. Often it's missing. So to have a player of her caliber own that position too really makes a difference. So goals are going to come from the crease area. That's the reality of our game. So we need, you definitely need, need to play our net front. Calgary now with speed into the Toronto end. Jenner shot on goal. Truly really nice save there at the top of her paint and no rebound. So already the fifth shot she's faced through five minutes of play here early in the first period. But managing everything really well. Again, you know, a, a decent shot there, a little bit outside, a little bit high, but no rebound, no, no fuss, no muss. And I think that's the biggest thing when you're looking for a goalie. It gives a team confidence, right, when you start to see your goalies dialed in. Exactly. Suzuki with a pass that one gets intercepted there by Calgary played behind the Toronto net Fideski will get that into the netting so I'm not sure if there was a deflection on that if we're going to get a delay of game call uh, our vantage point a little difficult here unfortunately at this particular arena tough to tell if it hit the ice or the netting but I guess we'll find out in a moment here look like it went straight out from from, from where I what I saw there yeah. I think they are going to call her here Yeah, they're trying to figure out who, who was the player that flicked it over the ice or over the, the glass, and there it is. So 
So Julia Fedeschi headed to the penalty box. She'll sit two minutes or less for a delay of game call. In terms of specialty teams, uh, I will say the Inferno have struggled a little bit this season. Power play sitting fifth in the league, 24.1%. The penalty kill for Toronto, fourth in the league, 72.7%. Decker now brings it to the center of the ice. Nice job there by Spooner. She is on the ice at all facets of play. Penalty kill, PP, even strength, incredible. The kind of player that Natalie Spooner is. Yeah, she's just a presence. She absolutely dominates a game, and, and she's a worker. So, yeah. you know, I think when you put her on a PK like this, she takes pride in, in doing exactly what she just did there and making, causing turnovers. She's happy to be in a battle. So she is. She's a skilled player, but uh, to me, her real strength is her, her work ethic. Greco and Johnston battling in the corner. Kelty Apperson on the ice as well. The sophomore player for the Inferno. Down low by Gosling, kept alive at the point. That's Bellamy. Bellamy to Johnston in front of the dot, looking for a slapper. Back to Bellamy. Johnston, one timer. Nice save there by Chuli. Rebound, another save. Chance for Apperson. Another save by Chuli. Well done. Three in a row right there. Slap shot. She scores! Casey Bellamy makes it a 1 0 game on the power play. 13 49 left in the first period. And just a great shot there from Bellamy. She's so, so smart. She gets she her is. head up. And what's it, best, best part of that goal to me is it's Gosling screening in front of the yes. goalie. So you've got a defenseman, but again, it's just about filling a role. And uh, truly doesn't see that one. That's the reality. No. Too, many, too many bodies in front of her. And if they can't see it, it's really difficult to save. So great execution there on that 1 3 1 power play. And no doubt Calgary will like the feeling of that one because they struggled last night on the power play. Actually, they struggled with specialty teams in general because Toronto scored two on the power play themselves. So that's, you know that saying, getting off the schneid? I think that's one of those examples right there. Absolutely. So Casey Bellamy with the opening goal here to give Calgary a 1-0 lead. And Calgary with pressure once again. Warren out, battling in the half wall. Willow be able to keep it alive. Will be back to the point, slap shot. Dakota Woodworth, wow, she nearly decked that one in. Stays on her feet. And Channel will take over for Toronto, the rookie defenseman. All by herself right now as a line change. Looking for some reinforcements as we get some white jerseys back out on the ice. Collision there in front of the Calgary bench. That was a great shift there by Calgary's fourth line after that power play goal. That's exactly what you want from them, just create energy. Nice save there by Annie Belanger. She'll make a third save actually, so a good shift here for Toronto. Maybe feeling a little bit of that pressure. Natalie Spooner with the puck now, centering out in front on Annie Belanger, and she elects to hang on. I think she sensed a bit of chaos there. Nice shift there by Toronto. Yeah, and again, top line out there, so you, that's kind of when you think you can go back and, and tilt the ice a little bit in favor of the Furies, which is exactly what they've done there. And I think for as a goalie, anytime you can get a whistle in a game, you're in a really good spot. So I think both goalies have done a tremendous job so far. Uh, just, just controlling the pace of the game. And it gives your team a rest. It, it allows everyone to kind of reset and gives yourself an opportunity on face off here. So if you are tuning in from Toronto, Annie Belanger between the pipes for Calgary. She's a rookie net minder. Normally Alex Rigsby is in net, but giving Annie Belanger a chance so far this season. She's four and one on the year. Picked up her first loss actually last night to Toronto. So nice to see her between the pipes. Get a line change here. One nothing lead for Calgary. 12-26 left here in the first period. Something we were talking about off the air, Carla, is the fact that you are very familiar. We have two Japanese players here today, one playing for Calgary, one playing for Toronto, and you're very familiar with both of them. Why would that be? I, I was really fortunate. Uh, in 2012, I was contacted by the Japanese Ice Hockey Federation to join their, their crew. Good chance here for Johnston. We'll get back to your story in one sec. Bellamy back to Gosling. Nice deflection there by Johnston, but Greco able to dump that all the way down the ice and we'll get an icing call. Yeah, so back to the Japan story. I was, I was able to coach them and I was brought in to help them qualify, potentially qualify for the 2014 Olympics, which they had not done since yeah. 1998. So I worked with them for two years. We went to the Olympic qualifier. We qualified. I got to walk in the opening ceremonies with that group. 
and coached Team Japan at the, the Sochi game. So, um, and then moving forward and, and sort of served as a little bit of a bridge between the players in Japan and, and the CWHL and was able to help a few players get the opportunity to play over here. So I stand up here with great pride watching those, those gals play and uh, you know, I definitely beam because it's one of the greatest things I've done in the game, been a part of in the game. Mizukami, she is a blue liner for the Calgary Inferno, and I'm really proud to say that we recently started covering them on Sportsnet 960, the fan here, and it's the first ever goal call that we had, so she has the distinction of that, so it's kind of special. I'll always have that connection to her as well. Very cool. Calgary with possession in the Toronto end right now. Rebecca Leslie dumped on the ground by Renata Fast. She will be headed to the penalty box there. And Calgary back to the man advantage. 11:24 left here in the first period, and their first goal coming on the PP as well. Yeah, there's a, there's an opportunity here for for the uh, Inferno to make a statement. You know, you want to keep taking penalties, we'll keep scoring. So sure. obviously the confidence there off the first. They're starting their second unit here. Um, hopefully, have the same success as their first unit. If you're uh, an Inferno fan, Apperson fighting with that puck plays it to the corner. Turnbull will track it down, gets it back to the point for Bridget Laquette. Laquette, back to Kurzaniak, Turnbull. Laquette's calling for it to Apperson. They'll switch places, back to the point, but that pass misses Hallie Kurzaniak, so Calgary will have to track back here as the penalty killers for Toronto get a line switch as well. Yeah, the Furies are really patient in their PK. If there's a loose puck, they're going, but if there's full possession, they have no issue just sort of sitting in the slot and staying in shooting lanes. Now the big factor there is if there's a shot, they have to block it. So right. that the initial goal there on the, the first power play was simply they didn't block it. So if you're pa passive, as they are, you need to be able to block that shot. It's kind of critical. A minute 10 left here in the power play for Calgary. The Inferno with a one nothing lead. Leslie plays it to the corner for Johnston, Calgary captain. Jenner behind the net, centering pass back to the point. Circled around for Kurzaniak. Laquette, slapper, looking for the deflection for Brianne Jenner. Misses short side. Leslie, back to the point for Laquette. Laquette to Hallie Kurzaniak. Kurzaniak shot on goal, doesn't make its way through. Quinn took that one. She's laboring a little bit as well. I think she took it in that unprotected part on her wrist. Gosling, slap shot. Ooh, and Natalie Spooner took that one off the hip as well. So. Bit of a firing squad here right now. Bellamy gets it over to Decker. Shot on goal. Nice save, Chuli. She stretches out. Rebound didn't make it through. In the Toronto end, still good battle here. Three white jerseys, two reds. And Channel comes away with it. Good battle behind that goal line. Kept alive by Gosling to Johnston. Back to Johnston, she curls around, looking for a shot. Chuli at the top of the paint, deflects that behind the goal. Back to Decker. Decker still with the puck, looking for some options. Gets it down to Willoughby. She leaves it for Bellamy, the goal scorer so far. Decker looking for her American D partner there, but misses the pass. Annie Belanger will play it out to Gosling. That gets tipped into the Toronto end, and we'll get a couple of line changes here. Overall, nice penalty kill there for Toronto. Yeah, they've got to be pleased with that. Again, zone time, no problem. Uh, the style of penalty kill, it's, it's designed that way, but really there were no pucks across the slot, so truly didn't have to move the whole width of her net at any point. It just kept to the outside, and that's all they want, so it was well done. one nothing game here, first period. Calgary Inferno in the lead, 8.33 left on the clock. We'll get... An offside call there as Dakota Woodworth took a bit of a spill on the blue line. Sandra Persina with the call. Pl proud to have Carla McLeod with me. How are you thinking the CWHL season has been going so far? Calgary and Montreal at the top of the standings, but then there's a bit of a, a cluster in the middle. Yeah, I think it's such a great league and it's a, you know, a necessary league. So I think right. uh, the, the parity within it is, is, is great. Yeah, we've got a couple stronger teams, but as we saw last night, you know, a good team game can, can take down anyone. So, um, you know, the parity within the league, I think, is what, what its absolute strength is. And, uh, you know, you get an opportunity to watch these athletes play at this level. It's, it's a great display of hockey. Chance here for Toronto as Spooner plays that one wide. Belanger got caught on the right side of her net and nearly a wide open one, but a penalty drawn here. 
And Bridget Calgary, Laquette. yeah. So Calgary headed to the box for the first time this morning. Yeah, a holding call there, and that's what happens. You get yourself in a foot race 101, and sometimes as a defenseman, you, you just naturally kind of hold on for the ride, and that's what happened. But it, well, you see the Furies power play here, and you said last night it was uh, firing on pretty, at a pretty good percentage, so obviously this is a great opportunity for them to pull even in this game. Yeah, they looked fantastic last night on the power play. Two power play goals in that 4-1 win, and overall they, they actually have the fourth-ranked power play in the CWHL at a 26.2 percentage overall. In terms of the Calgary Inferno penalty kill, 78.6%. So both of them a little bit of a middle of the pack here. Short-handed chance now for Calgary. Decker, Decker creating some space. Nice job there by Channel and Nurse will take over. Nurse for Toronto looking at some options. She's on the left side of the ice. She likes to take it in herself. We'll play it behind the Calgary net. Takes a bit of a fall there in the right corner. Played in front to Belanger, and she elects to just put her glove and her paddle on it there and just hang on. Yeah, not much going there in the, the first, uh, you know, 38 seconds of, of this power play, but the reset here at their second unit and try to try to establish a, a, a setup is probably what they're going to look to do here. And you got some potent players out there. you got Howard, who's she's a goal scorer. Yes. You know, get her the puck at the right time, and uh, she'll find the back of the net. So hopefully they'll find a little more uh, structure here in the second unit. So Howard, also one of the many rookies out on the ice tonight. Toronto, I'm saying tonight, it's actually morning. One of the many rookies out on the ice on both teams. And Turnbull takes out Emma Greco there. Surprised actually there wasn't a call, but Turnbull will play it into the corner. Julie will leave that for Suzuki, one of the Japanese players we were talking about. Greco eyeing out her options. 50 seconds left on the power play, but that pass doesn't make its way through, so Greco will have to regroup here. Sometimes you'll see this on power plays. You know, you go from a kind of a fluid five-on-five -five game to a really structured with your breakout and your yes. in-zone play, and sometimes it just doesn't click. And as a coach, I think every once in a while you just want to say, hey, you know what, go play like it's five-on-five -five and take advantage, because when it's not working, it's uh, it's tougher to, to get any momentum. Belanger plays that onto the stick of Howard. Bit of a mistake from the rookie goalkeeper there, but no harm, no foul. Played back to the point for Renata Fast. Howard plays that over the goal. And played all the way down the ice by Calgary Chuli. Smartly elects to play that to Spooner. She'll circle around her net with speed. And she's got a lot of it. Spooner versus Johnston. Captain versus captain. Spooner still with speed. Shot on goal. Belanger makes the save. And... <laughs> We're getting a no goal wave here. We'll see what transpires. Everybody was kind of crashing the net, unfortunately, from our vantage point. Kind of tough to see. But I think I think when you watch that play, and I think for a lot of young kids, if they have the chance to watch Natalie Spooner or play just like that, what a lot of a lot of players will actually do is they'll have that speed going up the wall. But they actually end up going around the net. Right. And as a defenseman, you just say thank you because it's, it's non-threatening. But what made that a threat is she took the puck straight to the net. She put the puck on the net. So then Sarah Nurse driving has the chance at that rebound. So that's just a heads up play by a smart player. And I think for Spooner and her size and her speed, that's such an advantage if she builds that into her game consistently. Well, and certainly, and you don't know who or what it will bounce well, off of, Well, that's it, right? and that's how the goals are scored in, in the women's game generally. You're not scoring you know, one tee outside the dots. It's gonna that's come right. from net front presence probably between the, the hash mark and the crease, to be yeah. honest. So to deliver the puck there so it has an opportunity was a huge play. And as you said, that's that's really their best best opportunity of the game so far. And it has Annie Belanger up to the task. She has made six saves thus far for Calgary. It's a one nothing lead for the home inferno. 5.35 here left on the clock. Nice penalty kill overall there by Calgary. Face-off win by the inferno. Bit of a dangerous play in front of the Calgary net, but no harm, no foul, and Calgary will take over. Dumped in by Captain Johnston. Leslie will look for that in the corner. But the Furies take over. Channel outlet pass looking for Nurse. Spooner will try and track that down, and there she is with that speed again. Plays it behind the Calgary net. Two red jerseys on her, nearly three. Good battle behind that goal line. Taken away by Calgary. Kept alive at the blue line, though. 
and Annie Belanger will just hang on. So that would be my compare and contrast. If I was doing video with my team, I think it would have been hard for her to turn that corner that second time. But you can see when she goes around the net, nothing develops, right, versus trying to drive either the near post or just putting it on the net. So, you know, just again, for that's my coaching hat on there. Oh, I like but, it. But uh, you take the puck to the net or put the puck to the net any time, and, and better things will happen than just trying to motor around the net. And even if somebody has the speed, say, of someone like Natalie Spooner, who's incredible on her feet, always in front of the net. Yeah, like, in, and for me, if I'm playing defense against the Spooner, all I'm thinking is keep her wide, keep her wide. Yeah. Right? And, and that's so if she goes around the net, I win as a defenseman. She drives to the net, I'm praying that I can <laughs> somehow stop her, and I probably can't, right? So, yeah. yeah, just little details that make a big difference. 4.30 left here on the clock, first period. Inferno with a 1 0 lead over the visiting Toronto Furies. Outlet pass now for Calgary. Some speed here. That pass is deflected into the corner. That was Dakota Worldworth. Blair Turnbull, that puck goes off of Renata Fast, who does the splits, also doing the splits. Truly drives that into the corner. Great save there by the Toronto goalkeeper. And Fast will take over for Toronto. Looking for Allen for that outlet pass. She lost it. And now Calgary with possession back into the Toronto end. Turnbull, nice save there by Chuli. No rebound, and she sucks that one in. Two good chances there by Blair Turnbull. You know, the first one, she, pe people might look at and say, oh, I wish she just shot right away. But you can see she's just trying to change the angle of her shot subtly to, to throw Chuli off. Second one in, she kind of comes in. No no, uh, no change of angle there, puts it on Chuli. But if you're going to beat a goalie of her, her caliber, that subtle change in your angle is going to make a difference. And you are familiar with Chuli as well. Yeah, I coached her at the U18 Worlds back in 2012. So... She was a, a big part of our team that year, helped us win a gold medal, and uh, have worked with her along the way at different Hockey Canada camps too. So it's pretty neat to see these these girls when they were young. She was about 16 when she, she played for me, and then uh, to see her now in the CWHL, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. She has faced 12 shots this morning, one getting past her. That was on the power play. Casey Bellamy with a point shot. Very difficult for anybody to save that, but she has looked very good on that same power play. She made three or four consecutive saves, so she has been very strong. Calgary now with possession, looking for an outlet pass. Nice job there to keep that alive. Almost a wide open goal there for Re Rebecca Johnson, but it went off the weird kind of shaft of her stick there. Just not able to get some good wood on it. Battle between Greco and Leslie. Played to the half board. Decker with her strength gets it over to Johnston. Leslie in front of the goal. Decker top shelf glove side makes it 2 0 Calgary. <laughs> what a goal. Hey, eh? you got two of the best players in the world. Yeah. Deciding they're going to play well together and have some fun. And man, just, just puck movement like that. You can't defend the puck movement. You know, you can yeah. defend a fast player, you can defend a one on one, but you start moving the puck, now you get people chasing. And that's exactly happened, right? Nice give and go, and what a release by, by Decker. She's a heck of a player. She is incredible. This is the first time I've actually seen her up close. I'd only seen her internationally, of course, and I know she's one of the best American players in the world, but she loves, and I, this isn't a secret, she loves top shelf. Yes. She just loves top shelf, and that's how she scores the majority of her goals. So Brianna Decker making it a 2 nothing game here for Calgary. 2.46 left in the first period. The Americans getting things going for the Inferno today. Casey Bellamy and now Brianna Decker. Calgary and Toronto battling in the Inferno end on that half board. Calgary trying to scoop it out. Kept alive, played behind Annie Belanger. Back centering pass, Spooner out on the ice, that top line for Toronto. Looking to get a bit of a spark after Calgary scored that goal to give themselves a two goal lead. Ooh, Louise Warren takes a bit of a bump there. Back into the Toronto end, fast. Gets it out to Nurse. Nurse looking for some options, centering pass. Shot on goal, Annie Belanger drives it into the corner. And Calgary now with possession. Under two minutes left here in the first period. Calgary and Toronto. Calgary with the 2 nothing lead. Apperson, she's looking for Jenner. Nice job there by Channel to take it away. The rookie blue liner. She looks for a couple of options here. Gets it to Nurse. Nurse plays it into the neutral zone. Nobody there for Toronto. So Kurzaniak takes over for the Inferno. 
played back to her by Bridget Lequette. Into the neutral zone. Nice pass there. Shot on goal. Apperson decides she'll track it down as Calgary goes for a line change. She and Howard will battle for it. Back behind the Toronto goal line. Channel for Toronto. And now Calgary will take over. One minute left in the first period. Oh, everything opens up here for Calgary. Decker centering pass. That one's deflected and Darkangelo will take it on for Toronto. She's got Howard on her right side, but Howard elects to go for the line change. So Darkangelo all by herself, not a lot of options. Still though, joined with some reinforcements and a good spurt here for Toronto. Shot on goal, that one doesn't make it through. Centering pass, nobody there for Toronto. And now Calgary. Down the short side, Chuli uses her blocker. Chance now, and that pass is deflected by Sarah Nurse. Get caught up in the skates of Natalie Spooner. Kept alive at the point by Calgary, by Gosling. Gosling loses it, and Spooner to Nurse. Nurse going one-on-one, -on -one, goes wide. Shot doesn't make its way through. Nice block there by Calgary. And that should do it here for the first 20 minutes of play between Calgary and Toronto. Casey Bellamy and Brianna Decker make it a 2-0 lead for the home Inferno. What are your thoughts after 20 minutes of play? I thought it was a good, good period of hockey, sort of maybe what we expected at the start there, a little disjointed, but both teams settled in rather quickly. And, you know, it's, it's a good game. Yeah. And I think the teams are, you know, they're taking, making the best of their chances at the end of the day. And I think that's what you want to see. That obviously, Calgary carried the bulk of that uh, period, but Toronto had its chances. And last night, those went in. And tonight, they haven't, or this morning, they haven't gone in yet, but uh, give it time and, and maybe good things will happen. I think both goalkeepers have looked very good, too. Absolutely. And you can look at either one. You know, obviously, chuli has been, been quite busy. And Belanger's just been, uh, you know, having to be on her, on her mark when the time is right. So I give credit to both goalies. I think they've settled in nicely and, and they're helping their teams have success. Excellent. So a 2 nothing lead here for Calgary. 20 minutes of play in the books. We will be back with you momentarily. Yeah. <laughs> so pleased to be joined here in the first intermission with Gina Kingsbury and a bit of a connection because you were 
uh, coaching the Calgary Inferno, and now you have moved into a new role with Hockey Canada. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I uh, just in July moved into the director of our uh, women's uh, national team program, so from our U18 uh, program all the way up to our Olympic uh, team. So obviously had a little bit of a... Uh, conflict and interest if I yeah. uh, continued to coach with uh, Calgary which uh, broke my heart a little because I really enjoyed uh, that position and really enjoyed that group of girls and uh, the coaches that I got to, to work with uh, so a little disappointing in that but at the same time a great opportunity for myself uh, with Hockey Canada so couldn't, couldn't deny that. So. And of course, this is an interesting time because we're just coming off of an Olympic year. Obviously, Pyeongchang, not that far removed. I know it seems like it was a long time ago, but it was in February of this year. Yeah. So we're getting into a new cycle here for the women's program. How are you involved in that? Because no doubt it's very busy. You're busy likely scouting and trying to find different players from around the country. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing here today. I'm here with uh, Perry Pern, our head coach of our national team, and we've been watching a lot of this uh, CWHL games. We've been traveling quite a bit, going to Toronto, going to Montreal, uh, keeping a close eye on our athletes. 80% uh, of the athletes that we, we would be considering for a senior national team play in the CWHL. So uh, it's a great platform for us to see what, uh, you know, what they're capable of, uh, how consistent they are throughout the season, yes. and, and be able to have a, a good idea of uh, the pieces that we need to put together before Worlds. Well, the CWHL is interesting because it's made up of players not only that come through the NCAA, and some people might see that as the traditional route, but we're seeing a lot of player in youth sports. Uh, not long ago, I did an interview with Caitlin Willoughby, and she's from Saskatchewan, and she wanted people to know that youth sports is an option not only as a platform for the CWHL, but for the national team as well. Absolutely. Uh, we play uh, an all-star youth sport team every, every summer in our development uh, camp, and uh, you know, this is two year, two summers in a row that they beat us. So yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they, uh, they put us in our place, which is uh, it's it's always great to see. But the the caliber of youth sport has increased tremendously over the past uh, few years, and it's a great option to be able to to go to school in Canada, get a Canadian yes. degree, uh, play five years versus four in the NCAA. Uh, so there's not really a right or wrong on what route to take. It's all individualized and it's personal to, to what your needs are and, and where you want to go to school and what type of environment you want to be in. But uh, it's great to see that that's a great option for, for yeah. our up-and-coming athletes for sure. So what are your thoughts? You've coached in the CWHL. Now you're watching, obviously, from an outside pers perspective with a different vested interest. You want to create a national team that's successful. What are you seeing on the CWHL, particularly this season? Uh, the parity is incredible. Uh, the, the caliber is, is stronger than when I coached two years ago. It's, yeah. uh, it gets stronger and stronger, and it's, uh, it's a great platform. There's lots of people in the stands. There's lots of little girls that come yeah. out and watch. Uh, you know, I think it showcases our game at the highest level. And, and the more that we expose our game, the more that people understand that those Olympians that you worship every four years, they compete every single night, uh, you know, every weekend on, on this platform. Uh, to come out and watch them, I think is fantastic. And, and to see the other athletes as well that might not be on a national team, but again, yes. the gap is, is not very big. They're, they're right there. So the caliber is really, really high, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great league for our athletes to be training in and, and performing in, for sure. Something that GM Kristen Hag said to me recently is that the Inferno are Calgary's best kept secret. And, and I think that's the truth, where Calgary particularly is such a hotbed for hockey. Obviously, we have the Flames. They're doing exceptionally well right now. Junior hockey is very big here. Yeah. This is wind sport is the home of Hockey Canada. And then we have the Inferno, who are two years removed from winning the Clarkson Cup. So there is such a hotbed here, particularly for Hockey Canada. I would agree. I, I think more people need to know that uh, this uh, this team is uh, is located in Calgary and that they play every weekend here. I think it's uh, uh, again, it's uh, just a, an indication of, of what people admire every four years. It's right here in your backyard. Yeah. Uh, and Calgary has always, in the past five years, had an incredible team. So, uh, you know, it is uh, you know Calgary's best uh, kept secret for sure. I think the more people can know that this is here. I, I think uh, the better for sure. So looking ahead to the calendar, you have the U or U18s coming up for the women, yep. as well as a special Canada-US series coming up too, which is obviously pretty huge. The Olympics, we said, not too far removed. There's that rivalry. Let's, it's always, always there. It's incredible. So yep. why don't you talk about those two tournaments that are coming up? Yeah, so our U18s, we're heading over to Japan uh, here. Uh, we're going to have a pre-comp in, in Vancouver on uh, December 28th. Uh, and then we're heading over New Year's night, uh, New Year's Eve, uh, to, uh, to Japan. A uh, really great group of girls that we, we put together, a great uh, uh, staff. So really looking forward to that. Actually, Courtney Burchard, uh, or Kessel, now married uh, from uh, the head coach from the Toronto Furies is our assistant coach so she'll be heading over to Japan with us so hopefully we'll be able to uh, 
uh, to bring back a gold medal at, at that level and, and kind of give that taste of, of, uh, of winning to those mm -hmm. to the next generation of our athletes. And, uh, and then in February, February 10th to the 18th, we have a, a camp in uh, uh, southern Ontario in Detroit. We play three games against Team USA. Uh, the NHL is actually on board on, on putting this together and promoting it, and uh, hopefully it will become a year, uh, year after year yeah. event. Uh, where we'll play for uh, a cup and, and, and see the, you know, who wins the three-game series. And uh, again, every time you play against the U.S., it, uh, it one is, is phenomenal for our program and getting better and challenging ourselves. But it's also great to just promote the game. It's, uh, you know, it's the best game there is in the women's side is Canada versus U.S. And so the more people that get to see that, the, the more that we can uh, expose our game at that level, uh, the more our game will grow for sure. And so. the Worlds, actually, I, I forgot, it's an Olympic year, so we didn't have Worlds this year. It's actually not, too, what is it, March? Uh, March, yeah, in, in Scandinavia. March, uh, yeah, beginning of April, it's uh, Espo, Finland. Yeah. So we're going to head over to, to Finland and, again, retry to, to regain some of that lead that, that we used to have yeah. uh, against the Americans. But, uh, yeah, just a really busy uh, second half of the, of the year now coming up. But uh, really excited of where we are and, and, and what, we're, uh, what we're moving forward towards. So Gina Kingsbury here with us. We miss you in Calgary with the Inferno, but yeah. congratulations on your ro new role with Hockey Canada. I appreciate that. Hope to see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you for joining Perfect. us. Awesome. Thank you. Second period is up next.
So second period just about to get underway here in Calgary and puck has actually dropped. We'll give you a scoring summary in a moment here. But Calgary with a 2-0 lead. Second period underway, the Inferno in their reds, the Toronto Furies in their visiting whites. And we'll just get an early whistle here, but I will give you a scoring summary. Casey Bellamy with her third of the season to make it a 1-0 lead for Calgary in the first period. Rebecca Johnston and Caitlin Gosling picking up the assists on that power play goal. And then Brianna Decker at the 17.08 mark of that first period. Another assist to Rebecca Johnston and Casey Bellamy. So a couple of multi-point games. So start here with Renata Fast just taking a tripping call and putting the Inferno right back on their power play here. So obviously weathering this power play, and it's always more difficult in the second period because it's changes are harder, everything's harder. Um, so this will be a massive kill here for the Furies. And then beyond that, it'll just be, again, being opportunistic. They're, when they get the puck in the, the Inferno zone, putting it to the net and just grinding it out. Like, it, it doesn't have to be pretty at this point. It just has to be effective. So Calgary with its third power play of the day. Still in the morning hours here in Calgary, so if you hear me reference morning, that's because it is. <laughs> A battle on that far board there, behind the goal line, played to the half wall, kept alive by Bellamy. She opened the scoring earlier to Johnston. Johnston to Bellamy. Bellamy shot through, bouncing. Gets through some bodies, but looks like it was played by a high stick. So we'll get a face off outside. You can see that's a bit of a setup there for the Inferno. They're trying to work that puck back to Bellamy and then give her that opportunity to shoot. It worked in the first period for their first goal, but a great job there uh, by Chuli again, fighting through to see that to make sure she could get get in front of it. And uh, you know, it's it's not it's a battle for these goalies in this day when when they got so much traffic in front of them. Julie in between the pipes for Toronto. Annie Belanger, the Calgary netminder. Back to the point. Laquette, shot on goal. Driven nicely into the corner by Chuli. Back to Kurzaniak, to Laquette. Laquette to the other side, shot on goal. That one goes wide and all the way out, so it'll scoot into the Calgary end. That's such, sorry. No, no, go That's ahead. such a high risk play. So that's what I was talking about earlier. If you're gonna play passive, you can't allow that puck to cross your slot like that. So Julie's gotta now go the whole way across her net. And you can see the time and space that Blair Turnbull had. So the Furies wanna make sure they can protect that slot a little bit more. Shot on goal there, Brianna Decker in the paint. I'm sorry, that was Brianne Jenner in the paint, one of her special places. Short-handed opportunity now for Greco for Toronto. That goes wide on Belanger. And now speed for Johnston. Chuli elects to play that into the corner. Back to Decker, shot on goal. Wow, Chuli got back in time, very lucky there. Shot on goal, nice glove save. Drives it behind her net. And a good hit kill there by Toronto. We're back to even strength. Slapper on Gosling, and it looks like that one may have been tipped by Johnston, but nonetheless, now it is a 3-0 lead here. Nice job there by Gosling to just get that one in with that slapper. Yeah, nice head heads-up shot there again. Saw our teammate going to the net. I do think it was tipped as well. And, you know, sometimes you get an extended power play, especially in the second period. So the peak airs have been out for a little bit there. And, yes, it's 5-on-5, five five, but there's a fatigue factor. And I think that might have uh, might have helped the Inferno on that one. So it is a 3-0 lead here for the Inferno early in the second period. 17-28 left on the clock. We'll see who gets credit for this goal. So Caitlin Gosling does get credit for that goal. A couple of blue liners getting in on the scoring this afternoon or this morning. I should correct myself. Chance now for Toronto. But Calgary will take over. Willoughby loses that puck. Bouncing in front of the Calgary net. Off the crossbar. Great opportunity there by Allen, but just nicks it past Belanger. She had her beat, but didn't beat the crossbar. A nice turnover there by the Furies. Great structure in their forecheck. They're being patient. They're staying above their outlet and then attacking down when the pass is made. And nice turnover. Not only did they turn it over, they then attack the net. So that's actually two good chances here in the last minute. 
uh, with the with the shorthanded opportunity as well, just missed the net. So hopefully that's momentum for the Furies here as they continue to go through this game. Nice face-off win here by the Furies. Stewart and Spooner. Spooner looking for a centering pass for Nurse, but she was on her backhand and couldn't corral that pass in. So it goes the length of the ice, and Toronto will need to regroup. Strong forecheck here by Calgary, though. Laquette comes in off her line, tries to keep that in. She loses a tire, but she's back on her feet, back in her spot. And there she is with the puck right now. Laquette, bouncing pass, centering out. Nobody's there for Calgary. Kept alive at the point, though, by Turnbull. Played into the corner. Channel battling for it. She loses it to Turnbull. Turnbull decides to go right in front of Chewy. But the puck is deflected into the corner. Now we've got a battle on that half board. Jenner to Turnbull. Turnbull back to the point for Laquette. Perzaniak calling for it. She'll slide it into the opposite corner. Jenner keeps it alive. Chance now for Johnston. Inside, outside, goes off the outside of the post. Beat the goalie, but it didn't beat the post. Slap shot by Decker. Blocker save into the corner. Back behind the Toronto net. So very good possession here for Calgary in the Toronto end. Toronto still can't get it out. Battle in front of the Calgary bench. Toronto is in a bit of a desperate need of a change here, but Calgary still with possession. Speed now going on that right side, centering pass. Back to Gosling to the point. She scored the third goal this morning. Kept alive. Flick pass into the half board. And Toronto is able to clear. Calgary has to keep going here, right? At the end of the day, you've got a line that's not going to face their third, potential third unit, but turnover there and they lose their advantage. And Spooner with a shot on goal there by, but a save by Annie Belanger. So Toronto getting hemmed a little bit in their zone here about five minutes through this second period, but they do get a face off here in the Calgary. Yeah, and that's them being patient. They had a, you know, top lines out there, so they understand how to manage a game. And again, they get their opportunity to get that puck. They get the whistle in the offensive zone and no harm, no foul. So again, when you play a team that's as deep as the, the Inferno, it's okay again to have time in your zone. You just have to be comfortable with it. And I think the Furies were there. Toronto with some possession now. Belanger just takes that off her blocker and she elects to hang on with her glove. So we'll get another face off here in the Calgary end. It's a three nothing lead so far, 1437 left here. In the second period, we are live at Win Sports in Calgary, Alberta, the Jones Snyder Arena. Face-off win there for Toronto, but Willoughby takes over. The Calgary rookie looks for an outlet pass for Warren, but Chuli, with Warren barreling down on her, decides she'll glove it in as well, so we'll get another face-off here, this time in the Toronto end. I know in the Calgary market, when I follow the Calgary Flames, head coach Bill Peters talks a lot about face-offs, and we saw a good example there. The Fury actually won, the Fury's won that draw. But knowing your job and your responsibility, every face-off is a 50-50 puck and bearing down. So really they won the draw and the puck ended up in their own zone. So tidying that up for both teams and taking pride in them is such a huge part of our game. And we talk about it right there, Calgary with an opportunity. And that all comes from a face-off win. And I would say Brianne Jenner, very, very good in the dot. Yeah, she is, and and I think you know that's part of it. And the other side of it is, are your other four players helping you win that puck? You yeah. know, it ends up being a collective uh, deal that you're all going to buy in and, and be a part of it. So Calgary will circle back. Blair Turnbull goes in on her backhand, plays that behind the goal line. Laquette will come in off her blue line to help Turnbull out. Laquette back to Turnbull. Jenner's marking that spot at the point with Laquette a little bit down low. They'll switch up once again. Krasaniak can't keep it alive and a chance now for Toronto going one-on-one -on -one with Belanger. Inside out, nice blocker save there by the rookie Calgary netminder as Calgary was caught with a couple of players pinching there. Great play by McNeil. She had a great uh, great move there too on Belanger. She had the, the opening and, and Belanger just hung with her. But great speed, good net drive, well done. Calgary will regroup now. Kurzaniak to Laquette. Fans on the pass. Gets it over to Leslie. So Calgary's top line out right now. Leslie, that'll be called for offside. They'll have to tag up once again. 
And now Toronto with possession. Toronto's top line out, Nurse. Nurse, Stewart, and Spooner. Nurse, ooh, that one had some sauce on it. Spooner plays it over, but Bellamy takes over the puck. Gets it over to Gosling. Gosling to Decker. Decker misses that pass, though, and Toronto will take over. Nurse, Nurse with speed. Spooner, shot on goal, doesn't make it through. Johnston now to Decker. Decker looking for Leslie, plays it to Johnston instead. Johnston to Decker, to Gosling, loses that pass. As we get a battle there in the Toronto end. And some end-to-end -end action now. Chance for Toronto trying to go inside out. Nice job there by Casey Bellamy. Slap shot, goes wide. Louise Warren now for Calgary, able to get it over the blue line. Darkangelo will have to go and track that back for Toronto. Played in front of the Calgary bench. And Toronto comes away with it. Speed now for Darkangelo, goes wide. Bouncing puck, played into the corner. Back to the point. Channel tries to get, over to get it over to Howard, but Dakota Woodworth takes over for Calgary. Woodworth with numbers. She's got Willoughby and Warren. I think if you're Toronto Fury's coaching staff, you, you actually want it to be open like this. It's giving them chances, and probably if you're on the Inferno bench, you want them to tighten up a little bit defensively and quit getting giving up those odd man rushes. So. You know, it plays to the favor of the Furies if, if um, Calgary starts to cheat towards offense and it's going to take that one chance simply like it was last night. One chance yes. and all of a sudden, you know, it's only a three-goal game. You get one, you can get two, and all of a sudden you've got momentum on your side. So, you know, it's interesting to see, sort of see how the game is now being played. I like to call that pond hockey. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, it's me fun when you're watching and playing, but I'm sure if it's a coach, it's kind of nerve-wracking. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you question once in a while. A little bit, yeah. Battle in front of the benches there on the right side of your screen. That'll be tracked down into the Toronto end. Jenner, this is Calgary's second line. Jenner and Turnbull out on the ice, centering pass. Chuli hangs on. He's searching for that pass. Jenner puts it wide. And Toronto will now take over. Played out, Krasaniak's able to glove it down. But Toronto now. Nurse with speed. Really good battle there. I'm sorry, that was Renata Fast. She and Turnbull, I think they're pretty familiar with each other, so good battle there. Laquette, centering pass, looking for Kurzaniak. Calgary keeps it alive. Slap shot on goal, that one goes wide. Calgary elects for a line change in Toronto now with speed. Nurse, shot on goal, Belanger, no rebound there and she'll hang on. And they want to keep keep these little opportunities going here. And I, what I like is the, the puck movement there. I thought earlier Nurse could have probably put the puck to Spooner, but she gets a second opportunity, and all of a sudden it's on Spooner's stick and, and you know what, they're going through the neutral zone. And the reality is, is this is their most dynamic duo. Yes. So them playing off each other really does make a difference in their game. Face-off win for Toronto. Gosling able to take that wide over to Decker. Nearly intercepted by Toronto, but it is Spooner now with a chance. Ooh, and that one's almost deflected wide by Stewart, but Gosling is going to come away with it. Gets it over to Johnston. Johnston trying to split the D, gets it over to Leslie. Shot on goal, looking for that down on the knee one timer, but whiffs on it just a little bit. Kept alive at the point by Bellamy, one of the goal scorers this morning. Still in the Toronto end, Johnston curling around. Give and go with her blue liner there. Played into the corner for Hickel and, let's make that Decker and Leslie. Back to the point, shot on goal, Bellamy gloved over by Chuli. And Toronto just having some trouble getting it out of their zone here, so some good pressure for Cal by Calgary in that Toronto end. Outlet pass now to Natalie Spooner. Natalie Spooner looking for some reinforcements. Toronto is going on the line change, nobody there. Calgary with five players back in their own zone trying to get that puck out, but nice job there by Toronto to keep it in. Dirkangelo loses it on the boards, and now Calgary will come away with it. Calgary with some speed. 
Going wide behind the net, curls around, plays it behind the Toronto net. And a chance here now for Renata Fast to take over. Out looking for that outlet pass. Goodness. Looking for a breakaway opportunity. And now Calgary with possession in the Toronto end. You've got to start thinking about energy systems and, and fatigue a little bit here, especially as the top line for the Furies is getting stuck out in their own zone for extended lengths of time. Like we talked, they had a travel day yesterday, they play a late game, quick turnaround, and now you're being hemmed in in the second period, two shifts uh, in a row. Yeah. That you start fatigue, you start to worry about it, I think, if you're, if you're the coaches of the Furies. Jenner scoops it in behind the Toronto goal, plays it over to Apperson. He's apprehended a little bit, but comes away with it. Finds some ice and close range shot there. And Shuli elects to just hang on. I think she's seen enough as well. She's just been great though. I, she's been a real treat to watch here today. And, and her her battle level hasn't, hasn't depleted at all as the game has gone on. So again, I think as a goalie, typically actually they thrive in games like this. Yes. I think most goalies have preferred 30 to 40 shots in a game than you know 15 to 20. So you can see the competitiveness within her and, and that professionalism to just keep going and giving her team a, an opportunity to stay in this game. Now Chuli has faced 23 shots so far. 8.02 left here in the second period as the Inferno lead the Furies 3-0. Chance now for Toronto trying to go inside out. We have a delayed penalty here and a penalty now as they were trying to get that extra attacker on but Calgary touches the puck so Brianna Decker is headed to the box and a chance now for Toronto to get its first goal of the morning on the power play. Great chance there by McNeil again and she had the, the breakaway earlier. What I'd love to see though, she's trying to beat that defender one on one. No need. Use that defender as your screen, especially in a game like this where you just got to get the puck on the net to give yourself a chance. Defensemen one on one have the advantage, so I'd love to see Fords use those Diaz screens more often. Chance now for Toronto. Spooner trying to get that puck to Nurse, but played all the way down the ice to Chuli. So Toronto will have to regroup on this power play. So deflating early in a power play, I'd have to go all the way back down 200 feet. But uh, if they can come in organized, they'll be okay here. And that entry always so important, and Nurse able to do that. Plays it behind the Calgary goal line. Krasaniak, though, battling for it for the Inferno. Plays it to the opposite side. Nurse takes over, though. Shot on goal, bobbling puck. Good save there by Annie Belanger, and Calgary will take over. Caitlin Willoughby flicks it down the ice. So even watching the body language here as Furies change, you know, Sarah Nurse, she's tired. You can see it. Yes. Right? And it's just... It's unfortunate because these are the moments that are key here to get your team back into it. And not from a lack of effort by any means, but you can just see in her body language, she's, she's, she's exhausted. And of course, she's a very multi-talented player. She plays the power play, she plays the penalty kill, and she's on the top line. So like you said, she faces a lot of ice time. So it's about conserving that. And if you are on specialty teams, you don't want to get too exhausted. Well, and I think that's, you know, when you're coaching, you're always trying to find that balance. You know, top end players, they're only your top end if they can compete at their their highest level so you know trying to find that right balance of how often do I play them what scenarios do I put them in um, and it's not always an easy sort of moving target so you know you, again you look here at this power play we're just struggling to get out of the, the end zone here and, and probably the biggest piece of that is fatigue 22 seconds left here on the man advantage for Toronto as they try to get into the Calgary end it's played in deep now Tori Hickel We'll get it to Johnston, and Johnston's able to clear that puck. And Shuley will leave it for her defender. As we're back to even strength, Brianna Decker coming in from the box. And back to the ice. Spooner now for Toronto, looking at some options. Goes one-on-one -on -one with Hickel, and that time she used the screen. So she listened to you there. <laughs> <laughs> I have my microphone down to their bench. <laughs> Natalie. But that's a great play, right? And at the end of the day, obviously you want to hit the net. You're yeah. going to be captain coach, obvious. But it's just, it's so much harder for the goalie to track the puck through the defender than it is to have them try to dangle the defender and all of a sudden they're closer to the goalie. It's just an advantage to the defending team. So really great shot there. Great idea by, by Natalie Spooner. Laquette with possession of the puck, leaves it for Kurzaniak. Kurzaniak will get it to Jenner. Jenner flicks it in. Turnbull and Apperson on the ice now. Jenner centering pass, looking for Krasaniak. She's on her backhand. 
That's a little tough. Jenner shot on goal, and she scores. I think Chuli might have been, her vision wasn't totally there. I think you can give Jenner credit for just really as a, a spinorama shot. So she got it on her stick, she spun her body to be in the right position, just slid it at the net. And, and at the end of the day, Chuli was still moving. And yeah. as a goalie, it's the hardest thing to make a save when, you, well, number one, if you can't see it, but number two, if you're moving, because they want to be set. And I think she was still sliding and uh, just happened to find the five hole there. So a little unfortunate for, for all the saves Chuli's made, that one goes in, but uh, again, She's had a big day here today and she's played incredibly well. She has, she's been wonderful in goal for Toronto. She's faced 25 shots through nearly 40 minutes of play, about four minutes and 45 seconds left here in the second period. Good opportunity now here for Toronto. Shot on goal, Belanger smothers that shot and able to get away from that rebound. We've got a battle here which is kind of distracting <laughs> everything. Howard and Murray are just on the ice. Looked like a wrestling match. Toronto, nice spell of possession there. Pickle trying to get that one out for the Inferno. Back to Darkangelo. Now she's battling with Murray once again. And Woodworth will take over. So the triple W line on for Calgary right now. Shot on goal. That one is blocked very well by Renata Fast. And so well that Toronto's got possession. No icing call there. Gosling for Calgary. Tries to go over to Murray. Spooner was looking for Nurse, but intercepted by Gosling. And that'll be played all the way down the ice, so we'll get a bit of an icing call. Sorry, I was so distracted here by the wrestling match <laughs> behind Belanger. Oh, I'm not sure what, what was going on there, but and I don't know who won. I, I couldn't tell no. either, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, those are moments too, and that's the reality. Like, that's why this is a pro league. Uh, the competitiveness and the desire to compete and win is, is high. And I think when you look at the stands and we've got a full crowd here again today, um, I think people appreciate that, that level of compete and that level of, of fight, to be honest. Natalie Spooner with a puck on the string. Sarah Nurse looking for the deflection in that blue paint, but Annie Belanger up to that task and now Calgary will come away with it. Yeah, great crowd here, very intimate. I like this actually. Normally if you come to Calgary and you play the Inferno, you play out of Winsport Arena A, which is a very big arena and everything seems kind of secluded almost, like everything is separated. But here at the Joan Snyder Arena, everything is very close together. And I think it's a neat experience for the fans because they're very close to the ice as well. So you get a sense for the physicality and how skilled these players actually are. Yeah, absolutely. And there's energy in the building. And I think in, in Arena A, it's uh, the energy is hard to conjure up because it is so big. So, you know, you sit here and uh, you can feel it and there's an excitement. And, you know, to be in the Joan Snyder Arena, she's been such a supporter of female hockey. And, uh, and so she's, I think she's actually here today. She might be, I think I saw her, but uh, you know, it's nice to have that too. And you need that in all communities, people who truly believe in the game and are, are willing to back it. Shot on goal, bobbling puck, and it goes in. A bit of a bouncer there. And it's a five nothing lead. I believe that was off the stick of Brianna Decker from the point. And the Inferno add to their lead this morning here in Calgary versus the Toronto Furies. That one might have actually gone off Greco's stick, kind of. I've been that defenseman before where I, I know I was the last touch and she had that look to her. So it might have been off her. And again, you're trying to do the right thing by blocking the puck or intercepting it. And sometimes tough luck and it goes in off your stick. But, you know, I think you, you look at the shots. The shots are one thing. It looks closer than maybe what the play is indicating. I think it's really important to, t to understand too, when you're playing in a game and if you're in your own zone, for the bulk of it, it's a different game than if you're playing in the offensive zone. So maybe where the shots aren't as, as tilted as, as maybe the whole game has been, it's, it's exhausting to play in your zone as long as the yeah. Furies have been this game. So Rebecca Johnston actually gets credit for that goal. So a multi-point game, it already was a multi-point game. I, I'm gonna do a double check here after 40 minutes, but I believe she is up to three points so far. Shot on goal by Kurzaniak there. And Toronto will scoop that up. Melissa Channel takes over. And McNeil now. She'll dump that into the Calgary end. Laquette surveys what her options are. Laquette gets it over to Jenner. Jenner who scored the fourth goal this morning. Plays that deep into the Toronto end. 2.16 left here on the clock in the second period. It's a 5-0 game for the Calgary Inferno. Belanger elects to leave that pass for Kelly Murray. 
Woodworth. Woodworth looking for a couple of options here. Gets it to Mizukami. Willoughby kept alive at the point there by Toronto only momentarily. And Woodworth and Willoughby out now for Calgary. Shot on goal. Nice block shot there by Toronto. And that's able to scoop out of the zone. I think now when the game is as you know, scores five nothing. It'll be interesting to see what both coaches do to, because this is an opportunity, right? If you're the standing on the Calgary Inferno bench, you know you can try different things now. You can maybe get your fourth line out more. You don't have to rely on your top three lines quite the same. And if you're Courtney Kessel on the the Furies bench, you got a chance here. Okay, we got nothing to lose. Yeah. So maybe we start changing our tactics a little bit. Maybe they'll start stretching a player. That they have the no um, no touch icing the hybrid icing, so they could maybe start taking advantage. Maybe there's face-off plays you want to try that you haven't done. You know, I think it actually frees you up as a coach to try new things just to see what your team's capable of. Because you never know down, you know, playoff time, what you're going to right. need. So, you know, I think I think that's what I'll, I'll look for a little bit as we continue to watch, just to see if there's any sort of tactical adjustments. I hope there are. And, of course, this is the last action for both teams ahead of the Christmas holidays. So, no doubt you want to go into that break on a good foot, even if you do lose. But to know that, like you said, you took the tactics that you discussed, maybe here at the second intermission, and you're going to leave on a good note. Well, that's it. And maybe it's a set play, and you just say to the team, hey, we're flying our right wingers here for the next, whatever, minute and a half in the second or something in the third, and you score on it. There's a belief now, too, that it's like, ah, oh, this could work. So yes. down the road in a pressure scenario, if you, you, there's a confidence amongst that whole group that you, you can execute it. So there's still lots to left to be coached. You can see here they're stretching off the draw. So you can already see they're, they're trying new things, which is really, really nice to see. So we did mention the final action for both squads before the Christmas break. Good chance here by Toronto, stretched out. That was Gosling who stretched her body to avoid the pass there. Spooner and Nurse out for Toronto. Just a minute of play here left in the second period. Toronto's next game slated for Saturday, January 5th in Montreal versus the Les Canadiens for Calgary on Saturday, January 5th. The Inferno will be part of the CWHL coverage on Sportsnet when they visit the Markham Thunder. It's going to be a great day for the CWHL to get back-to-back -back games. Back-to-back -back days? Back-to-back -back days. That's so right, back-to-back -back days. Which is yeah, great. It's phenomenal. nice to, to see them get the coverage there. I believe Cassie Campbell will be there. Leah Hextall with the call. I believe they did the Clarkson Cup last year. So much enthusiasm for both of those ladies. I'm obviously really biased because Cassie's a Calgarian. So. <laughs> oh, I just think of the just that level of professionalism. And I think you've got Jana Hefford on Hockey Night in Canada talking about it. Yes. And, and you know, just great people around the game that are helping to continue to advance the game. And, you know, when I stop to think of those names alone, Cassie Campbell, Jaina Hefford, and what they've done, um, like, it's phenomenal. And, and for them to still be so involved and, and always helping, um, that's something for, for us younger players behind them. Like, I, I look to them and, and yeah. think what, what a role model they both are. So it's uh, it has profound impact, I think. So 40 minutes of play in the books. The Calgary Inferno with a 5 nothing lead over the Toronto Furies. Okay, say you're the coach of the Toronto Furies. What do you say to your team? in the dressing room right now. Do you say, forget about the score? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, for me, natural thinking, I, I've actually coached, uh, coached with Courtney Kessel, and you know, she's a younger coach, but she brings such an enthusiasm. So I think her energy will be key in that in this intermission to say, hey gang, okay, scoreboard aside, what do we want to get out of this last period? Right, what do we, we want to make sure we're working on? And maybe it's the power play to talk about, hey, if we get a chance, let's forego what we've practiced, let's try something new, keep it fresh, right? Like, it's taking energy away from them right now. But I would think it comes down to simple little things, and like we just talked about, I think it's little tactical changes that maybe make it exciting to play. Because it's a grind right now, yeah. right? So, so what can spark them and kind of get the players excited? Like, you know, can we get three breakaways this period? Something like that that's a little bit, uh, new and fresh so it'll be her energy she's got great energy so i don't worry about that she understands the game at a really high level so you know those little tactical adjustments she, she'll be able to do that with her with her assistant coaches and and hopefully that sparks a little bit of excitement for them well in toronto is in that section of the standings like we talked about you know with markham and with the team from china where every point counts and you want to make the most of all these opportunities because once playoff time comes around yeah okay Calgary and Montreal are at the top but you still have the Markham Thunder won the Clarkson Cup last year right if someone said that to me at the start of the season last year I'd said well I don't know Montreal you know what I mean right 
but here you never know what can happen so you want to get put your best foot forward at this part of the season because we have hit that halfway point. at the end of the day if you're down with five the chance of you coming back for five is a little anything can happen yeah. we know that but if we're going to play our odds here we know that the game's a little bit out of reach right now but you're going to have to play either the probably the lake canadians or the inferno to win that clarkson cup so what is it we're going to take from this game that's going to give us better success next time we face them like obviously they beat them last night so they know it's doable that's right but it's just if you find yourself in a pickle in playoffs and you're down and you got to be able to dig yourself out this is an opportunity to learn that tool and i think that's the most important thing because they are in a dog fight and they know it like the, they they look at the standings they know what the games are like you know they know exactly where they sit so i i really think it's just an opportunity to to really be a fine give a, a fine focus of a fresh energy to help them sort of work through this period and to gain something from the period so 40 minutes in the books calgary with a five nothing lead i'm sandra persino alongside carla mcleod and we will be back for the third period in about 13 minutes thanks for tuning in So 40 minutes in the books, the Calgary Inferno leading the Toronto Furies 5-0. And pleased to be joined by Calgary Inferno General Manager Kristen Hag. We'll introduce you to the Toronto viewers. This is such a neat experience today yeah. because we usually call Calgary games and it's like a Calgary home game. But today we had the opportunity to bring the game to Toronto through the Toronto broadcast. So pretty pretty cool co collaboration, I'd say, for myself and for, for you on the management side. Yeah, um, you know, when... Sammy and Katrina reached out to me about doing this. Uh, it, it was kind of a no-brainer. I mean, I, I, was, I was happy to help them with anything they needed to do this. It makes perfect sense to me to be streaming as many games as possible. Um, and, you know, it, it's great for the you know, fans in Toronto to be able to watch their team when they're on the road. Uh, but also, um, we actually have fans all over the place. Um, our players are from all over the place. They've got parents back home that want to watch. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really great thing for us as well. And an interesting venue today because we normally, so if people have never been to Calgary <laughs> before, Canada Olympic Park is also known as Windsport and Hockey Canada is based here. And this is a building, the Mark and McPhail Centre, I think has four arenas here. 
And yep. so we have Winsport. It normally, um, pardon me, Winsport Arena A, and that's actually to the left of us right now. And that's normally where the Calgary Inferno play, and obviously the, the capacity in terms of attendance is a lot larger. But here, this is the Joan Snyder Arena, and there's this like really intimate feel here today. Mm. It's a little bit different than what we're used to in the bigger arena. Yeah, you know, I actually sometimes think that this is a perfect venue for typically our Sunday turnouts are not quite as high. Um, and so we're kind of right at capacity in here. Uh, but sometimes, you know, 250 to 300 people in a, a smaller venue works out a little bit nicer than 250 to 300 people in a 3,000 uh, yeah. seat arena. And um, and really, it's kind of nice for us to at least play uh, once a season on Joan Snyder, um, you know, the namesake that you know, do donated a bunch of money to kind of help the Inferno get up and going in Calgary. And um, this was the the only arena that we played on for a long time. So um, we usually like to come back in here at least once a year. Yeah, and it goes way back to the days of the Alberta Honey, honey badgers. Honey, honey yeah. badgers. I was about to say honey bears, but <laughs> honey badgers. I needed to. They were really popular back in the yeah 2010 ish. <laughs> and you played for them, right? No, I oh, didn't, you play. didn't play. For that them. was okay. during my. Um, my first retirement, <laughs> I took five years off. <laughs> I was part of the predecessor Chimos and then came back once it was already the Calgary Inferno, yeah. And if you don't know, Kristen Hag was actually part of the Clarkson Cup team back in 2016. Now she's decided, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm okay with playing now. I'm just going to stick around and be the general manager. Decided? No, 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 no. <laughs> they, they, they made me do it. <laughs> but it's, it's so nice to see you st staying with the CWHL because you obviously feel something personally towards this league and you see the future that's in it. Yeah, it's not even just the league. It's, you know, when, when you've been involved uh, back with women's hockey as far as I have and, you know, with Sammy Joe, it's the same. We were talking about it yesterday when we were in Red Deer doing the outreach. Um, we kind of know what things were like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago when we were playing, um, you know, the early days of professional women's hockey. And um, we just want to keep helping it move further and further ahead. And um, it, it does help to have that experience and background uh, when you're, when you're involved with the team. And I have to say, it's really neat being involved with the people from Toronto today, because normally we're just in our little Calgary group and you bring you the broadcast, whether it be through the stream or through the radio. But I see this interesting collaboration with everybody. Of course, you're competitive. You want your team to win, but it's all because of you want to see a growth in this women's yep. game. Yeah, and the, the GM group, uh, general manager group, and you know the directors of operations at the league, are, it is very collaborative. Um, uh, we do all work for the league and, and moving the league along. So, you know, we have a call once a week at least to kind of, you know, discuss what's going on with each of our teams so that we're sort of in the know and uh, we can work together to move the team forward. And, you know, a lot of the players know each other too. And yeah. so um, it is, uh, it's, it's highly competitive, but at the same time, we do have a lot of the same goals. So going forward, we've got a Christmas break coming up and... Calgary and Toronto, if they haven't had enough of each other this weekend, they'll be playing each other pretty quickly there because Toronto is back in Calgary in the middle of January. That will be a CWHL live stream. I know I have it written down in my book. It's an 8 o'clock start on this Saturday. Oh, it will be at a it's win It's actually been moved up to 6.30. Oh. Yes. Well, see, it's a good thing that we're talking. <laughs> I, I thought, yeah, I know. Anyways, we, we moved it up to 6.30 because that's actually our Start the Spark game for um, youth mental health. And so... We figured uh, moving the start time up would be beneficial to everybody. And so uh, we're going to try and go with, uh, yeah, 630 on that one. And, um, yeah, Toronto again. <laughs> and, yeah, we've played only GTA teams for, like, the last few weeks. So. <laughs> I like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but tell us what the Start the Spark game is since I have you on yep. the line right now. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the game Toronto will be involved in? Yeah, so uh, dating back to, I think this will be our fourth season doing it. This was something that was um, sort of the brainchild of, uh, Jessica Campbell, who used to be on our team, uh, she worked with the Sheldon Kennedy Child Advocacy Center, yep. and um, she uh, ran a program that was, you know, raising awareness and, and teaching kids to talk about, you know, mental health and and things like that. And we would usually culminate her program with with this Start the Spark game. And Jessica's gone now. We don't still have the program, but we do still like to have the the game to to raise awareness for. Uh, the cause and to raise some money for the advocacy center as well excellent yeah so anything else you wanted to add let our viewers here in toronto know something from the calgary side of things oh no yeah just you know it's it's really good weather out here uh, i know you guys probably think that we're covered in <laughs> snow but other than that yeah no that's that's all we're i wanted okay. to let you guys know <laughs> thank you so much Kristen. enjoy yep, the rest you. of the game okay take care
get the split here this weekend. Yeah, if you're just joining us now, Calgary and Toronto actually played out in Red Deer yesterday. Toronto with a 4-1 win. Red Deer is located about, I'd say, an hour and a half-ish. I guess it depends who's driving. <laughs> an hour and a half uh, north of Calgary and they had just a, a female hockey day so they were giving seminars and all kinds of stuff and it just seemed like such a neat event for both Calgary and Toronto to be a part of. For sure and, and Hockey Alberta led that charge there with the All Girls Day and, and making it special for the local community and the reality is is the Canada Games are coming to Red Deer in February so it was also a, a bit of a test event there um, just to get the, the community sort of excited about that endeavor and and I'll tell you what, I, I've been fortunate to been a part of the Canada Games. I played in two. I'm actually going to be coaching Team Alberta at this upcoming one, and I'm a big fan of the Canada Games. Yes. So, so for that community, and if there's one thing I know about Red Deer, uh, they know how to welcome a, uh, the country in. They know how to host an event. So I, I'm excited for all the young athletes across our country here that are going to get that chance in February to, to play in one of the absolute best experiences in sport and that is the Canada Games. And you're right about Red Deer. Red Deer is this gem in between Calgary and Edmonton that's fantastic for hockey. I mean, the Rebels and the connection with the Sutter family alone is phenomenal. I've been there for curling events, a lot of stuff, and Red Deer is a great place to check out. No doubt that Gina Kingsbury would probably be paying close attention to something like the Canada Games because you never know when you're going to come across some sort of talent. Well, and I, I've go out on a limb that say that almost all the, the ladies on the national team at one point did play in the Canada game so certainly it's a it's a stepping stone that's the first step for for players to be recognized by Hockey Canada you always play for your provincial team first so at the U18 level you know this is a big entity for for all kids involved and the bulk of them of course it'll be the highest level of competition they'll ever get to play and I'll tell you what it's one of the coolest memories they're going to keep so it's not a bad thing at all uh, but obviously there's going to be a handful that come out of that that will then play on our U18 national team, work through our development team, and then hopefully one day play on the Olympic team. So it's definitely the starting point. Mel Davidson and her scouting crew, they will be there for sure. And uh, as you said, Gina Kingsbury will be looking at that crew to, to lead probably the charge 2026. Would great. be sort of probably their yeah. first Olympics. The odd one might make 2022, but uh, certainly a great opportunity and a great moment for, for all young players across the country. So the third period now underway, and we do have a goaltending change in terms of Toronto. Shea Tiley in between the pipes for Toronto. She just made her first save of the morning. She's coming off her big win there last night. And you've got to think for the Toronto Fury staff, pulling Chuli was not a, a knock against Chuli's play at all because we, you and I have been talking all game about how tremendous she was, and she was. Yep. You know, she faced a lot of pucks. She faced a lot of traffic. And probably at the end of the day, it's it, hopefully it's just a, hey, you know, we'll just get you out of there because y you've done your job for two exactly. periods and, and we'll put Shay in here for the, for the final 20. So I hope I hope that's how, how it was uh, delivered because certainly she had a great start and, and, and played strong for her team. Yeah, I enjoyed watching her. So we'll see what Shay does for the rest of this game. Toronto headed to the power play. Blair Turnbull headed to the penalty box here earlier in the third period. It's a 5-0 lead for Calgary as that puck is played back to the point but squirts away. And Tylee will leave it for Emma Greco. Sort of just how the game is going right now for the Furies. You know, a simple low to high pass there on the power play and somehow skirts, skirts by Greco and it's in down the ice again. So it's sort of how the game has been. It's been a bit of a challenge, a bit of a fight for the players out there. But... You know, they're, they're, again, they're professional. They'll stay the course here, but, you know, this would be an opportunity to try to get something going. Played into the corner by Allen. As Toronto goes for a line change, they'll get their number one power play unit on the ice. Chance now shorthanded for Calgary, going one-on-one -on -one with Channel. That's to go to Woodworth. Stick flying out of Willoughby's hands. Calgary elects to play it back into their end to kill some seconds off of that power play to Blair Turnbull. Tylee flicks it into the corner for Natalie Spooner. That puck off a of Spooner's stick, though, and Toronto will have to try again. Sarah Nurse. Bit of a fall there by Zoe Hickel, I believe, or Tori Hickel, and a nice glove save by Annie Belanger. She flashed the leather on that one. Was of course, that uh, and I didn't want to interrupt you, sorry. There are two Hickles and there are two Murrays. And I so actually think it was uh, it was Kelly Murray <laughs> there with the, the classic defensive heel pick. So uh, we've all done it. It hurts. But yeah, a unique scenario there at the Calgary Inferno to have two sets of sisters. And I think, you know, I don't know the Hickles very well, but the Murrays are from the Calgary area and have, you know, good community ties. And 
and I've been able to skate with Kelly Murray and help her out a little bit along the way. And um, great, great work ethic, always trying to get better. And and I suspect that's common throughout uh, throughout all the players on the ice, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah, they're from Southern Alberta. The Hickles actually hail from north of us. They're from Alaska. So. A lot of neat stories on, on this Calgary team. Toronto's interesting. I was looking at, at their roster in terms of internationally, and essentially they only have two American players. Everybody else is Canadian other than the one Japanese player, and basically everyone is from Ontario too. So it's neat to see how both teams came together. Calgary's got a little bit more of an international flair just because uh, Ben Lahovi, we haven't seen her today, but she comes from Finland, and then they do have a number of American players. So. Interesting to see that balance in the CWHL this season. It's a little bit more eclectic. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's a bit of a luxury for, for the Furies to be in the just the, the hotbed of hockey is Ontario, just numbers alone. So a lot of these players after graduation, you know, they try to gravitate back towards their home. Yeah. And, and, and lots of the, the girls are from Ontario. So I think Markham and, and Toronto benefit from that. And, and Calgary has the, the, the option then, the sort of the luxury, if you will, of, of maybe looking a little further and getting some of those Midwestern players like you know, there's a couple Badgers here Brianne yes. Decker right that, that you know it's not too far from them to for, for them to come up to Calgary so centering pass there by Laquette to Apperson Apperson will take over back to Laquette she's down a little bit lower she's normally a defender shot on goal goes off the post chance now for Jenner circling out in front plays into the corner but Esky for Platt tries to get that out Calgary keeps it alive at the blue line Kelty Apperson gets it over to Turnbull. Turnbull looking for Jenner in the blue paint. That's her home spot, I like to call it, but Tylee <laughs> hangs on there. You know, you look at that last opportunity that, that went off the post, and, and again, Tylee didn't see it. Uh, you know, good net front presence. It was actually Blair Turnbull on that one, but ironically, a lot of coaches will always tell young defensemen to keep the puck low, and I find with the style of goalies this, this day and age, you actually, if you can raise it from the point, it goes in because they're going to naturally butterfly. So again, that was when it went off the crossbar because goalies are sunk, you know, and if you can get the puck lifted from the point, it, it has a chance. So time and a place for any kind of shot, but I always like to tell my kids, if you think it's high, put it high. It's okay. Makes a lot of sense. Always nice to get some coaching tips from you. You always see such a different side of the game where I see more things more in black and white. I think the coaching is really interesting because you see things in the gray areas, which makes it, well, that's why you're a color commentator. <laughs> and, and a coach. And a coach, yeah. that too. Chance now for Calgary into the Toronto end. Tally drives that into the corner, back to Woodworth. Looks for a centering pass and a one-time shot by Willoughby. Spooner, she'll track that down for the Furies. Plays it into the corner. Stopped at the blue line by Calgary, though. Played back in to Johnston. Good battle there, and Cal uh, Toronto will take over. As Renata Fast takes a bit of a dump here in the Toronto end, she's actually headed back to the Toronto bench, laboring just a smidge. Toronto, slap shot on goal. Bellinger drives that into the corner. And Calgary with a breakout opportunity. Now back to Toronto. Videski, she's looking for a pass there, but that gets away. So a bit of action here in the neutral zone. Maybe what we expected coming into the third and five nothing game. It's, you know, I, I would call it vanilla right now. It's kind of <laughs> just back and forth, but nothing really shaping up on either side. You know, Calgary's probably content with five, and Toronto, you know, again, tough to muster up any jam uh, when when you're down five. So sort of probably what we would expect. Thirteen fifty six left here in the third period. Calgary with a 5-0 lead. Jenner with a bit of speed. Backhand shot handled nicely by Tylee. Darkangelo tries to get it to Howard. She's battling with Laquette. Darkangelo is able to get it to the center of the ice, but Calgary now. Laquette with speed. Slap shot. Tylee drives that nearly all the way out of the zone. Really nice play there by Allen just to scoop it all the way down the ice. And actually, we will get an icing call. I thought she was a little bit closer to the red line there but nonetheless it's interesting to see Tylee come in here and obviously a great game there last night but just looking at her too like you know she, she knows how to win she's won national championships with Clarkson and you just look at her size and just her presence alone you know like it's like she means business and I, th I think that goes a long way too and you can see here she's pucks at the point she's able to see above the crowd too so 
you know, there's you don't have to be a big to be a great goalie by any means. That's but, right. But, you know, if you're a good goalie and you're big, it, it does end up being a real nice combo. Well, what I think is interesting for Toronto between the pipes is that they do have two young goalies they believe in. And just looking at the statistics, they basically split the games in half. So I like what Toronto's done in terms of giving both goalies the opportunity. Well, and both are elite. Yeah. And, and we've, we've seen it this weekend. You know, you could watch last night's game. You can watch the first two periods of this game. And, uh, you know, there's no reason for, for Coach Kessel there to do anything other than that. And at the end of the day, you're going to go with who's hot down the stretch. But the, it also builds a nice rapport with between goalies, too, when both feel they're involved and, and valued. Exactly, yeah. Chance now for Toronto. Spooner. She's looking for Nurse out in the slot. Shot on goal. That one goes wide. Belanger trying to get back between her pipes in the Calgary net. Good battle behind that Calgary net line. Back to the point for Channel. She gets it to her defensive partner. Back to Channel. She had moved a little, but she'll swap down in. Back to Nurse. She's on the point. Looks for a slap shot. Ooh, that hit somebody in the shins. I could hear it all the way over here. And Calgary now elects to dump it in. Get a line change for the home side. 12-18 left here in the third period. 5-0 for Calgary over visiting Toronto. Team's final action before the Christmas break. Calgary will elect to regroup and work their way out here. Goes off a of Johnston skate. They'll have to tag up. Chance now for Howard. Howard looking for some options for Toronto. She's driven into the corner by Gosling. Played back to the point for Greco. Greco looking for a feather pass. Nobody there, though. Calgary's been doing a good job here, just clogging the middle and making it difficult. And I noticed a lot of block shots by Calgary, in particular, Caitlin Gosling. She's not afraid to put her body on the line for the Inferno at all. No, she's a strong player as well and, and well-rounded. So she has no issue at all kind of playing that defensive role. She's got an offensive upside, for, certainly, but uh, she, she's happy to kind of do what's necessary in this scenario. Yeah, Caitlin Gosling with her third of the season earlier in this game in the second period, 2-32 to make this a 3-0 lead for Calgary. That puck is played into the netting, and then we'll get a face-off here. 10.58 left on the clock. So just a reminder, Calgary and Toronto will square off once again in January. We talked about this in the second intermission with Calgary GM Kristen Hag. The Furies will be back in Calgary on Saturday, January 12th, as well as Sunday, January 12th. 13th and then that game on the 12th we were talking about it it's the start the spark game and it will be broadcast on the CWHL website 10:45 left on the clock in the third period Calgary with some speed into the Toronto end backhand shot goes wide by Hallie Kurzaniak Bridget Laquette will take over and an offside situation here Dossler was just ahead of that puck I remember back in my uh, my days of playing on the national team and you know we'd, we'd end up in some lopsided games and you know I always command and maybe I didn't appreciate it to the same degree I do now as a coach but you know Mel Davidson always expecting us to perform at the same level the entire way so that consistency piece and you know I think that could be a challenge here for both teams to be honest but certainly for the Calgary Inferno right now I you know you see an end-to-end -end rush we're starting to make they're starting to make plays that are individual Yes. Right at kind of that point night mentality. And I think great teams learn how to play consistently regardless of the scoreboard. And, and I think that's a challenge because, you know, you're able to get away with a little bit more maybe. Mm -hmm. and, and so you just go solo. And, and the game isn't a solo game. The, again, when you have the puck, you want to play with your numbers. And when you don't have the puck, you want it to be individual. Exactly. Right? So I think, I think right now the Inferno are playing into the hand of the Furies here. And, and we've seen it. There's been more zone time down at the other end, to be honest, in the third period than maybe in the first two. And I think that's a simple cue for me if I were a coach to be like, hey, we're, we're off our mark. Too, too much individual approach here. we got to move the puck, stay with our team game that's given us success. Yeah, I've really enjoyed watching Toronto's top line. Don't get to see them a lot, obviously, because we're out west, but we'll see them there in January. And just to see, obviously, Sarah Nurse, she's a rookie coming in. And to see them with Stewart and, of course, Natalie Spooner. I mean, she's just, she's incredible. Like, look at her right now. She's captain. She leads by example. She comes in. She back checks. She does every, you know, if you have a kid that's starting to play hockey, be like, play like her. Yeah, she, she just understands the, the work side of the game. And, 
you know, she has success offensively because her foundation is a work ethic component. So, and Jenner with her second of the morning to make it a six nothing game. She gets that in top shelf on Tylee. And you know, we talk about Natalie Spooner being a top end player and she is, so is Brianne Jenner. And again, yeah. you give her time and space. You know, she was able to stick handle that thing three times before ever releasing it. So that tells me she got her head up, you know, and she's pegging a, a real small spot there yeah. on Tylee. But when you give a player of that caliber, that kind of time, that kind of space, those shots can happen. So Brianne Jenner with her 10th of the season. And it's a 6-0 game, 9.36 left here in the third period, Calgary and Toronto. We are at Wind Sport in Calgary, Alberta at the Joan Snyder Arena. Clock's running right now, but I'm not sure either team will complain about no, it, so. I, I'm, I'm getting this sense just, uh, you know, you watch body language a little bit. I'm getting this sense from some of the players. The, the heads are down a little bit. The feet look like they're in quicksand. Well, and that's the reality. We've, we've touched on it a couple different times on the broadcast here, but, man, these women are competitive, mm -hmm. right? They're coming from national championship caliber teams in, in college. They've, you know, played in the Olympics. They've played in Worlds. It doesn't matter w what color your jersey is in this game. You're, you're competitive. Yeah. So, so nobody wants to be on the, the, the wrong side of a 6 nothing score. So, you know, the reality is, is you got to keep going. But you know what? It's not easy. Well, I do have to say this. Calgary is one of the best home teams in the CWHL. They have been throughout the last few seasons. So for Toronto, great save by Tyler there. For Toronto to come here and get a split, I think that's something very positive that the Furies can look upon, and maybe they'll see that as a turning point in their season as they progress up the standings. For sure, right, for sure. And you're always trying to find your measuring sticks along the way as a coach and, and a team to make sure that when push comes to shove and you hit that second half of the season, you're in the best spot you can be in, and you've grown over the first half. So, like you said, you know, you can watch game tape from yesterday and, and learn a lot and, and see how, how opportunistic they were. And you watch today and you think, hey, man, if we just tidy up, you know, point A and point B, we could be really good. So good shift here by Calgary. Calgary's top line out on the ice. Decker, Leslie, Johnston. Decker with the puck right now. She opened, or she's one of the scorers uh, this afternoon or this morning. She had the second goal, her American teammate. Casey Bellamy was the one that opened the scoring. Kodeski able to fish that puck out of that pile. Toronto looking for an outlet pass down to Allen. That'll go all the way down the ice. Icing is waved off, and now Calgary with an opportunity to get some legs here. Also, Calgary playing their third and fourth lines a little bit more, seeing, obviously, the triple W line a little bit here. Nice save there by Tylee. And to be honest, in this game, even from the start of it, when they've been on, when they've been given the opportunity, they've managed their dice time well. They've managed their shifts well. You can even see in this one, like, you know, they've got an F3 presence, right? They're, they're playing smart defensively, and then to get the offensive opportunity, they'll jump. Yeah, that's Warren, Willoughby, and Woodworth on the ice right now. That shot by Woodworth driven into the corner as Greco decides to take over. Played back to Nurse. So Toronto's top line out right now. Nurse with possession of the puck. She'll play it to Channel. To Greco. Leaves it for Spooner. Spooner looking for that outlet pass to Stewart, but it gets intercepted by Calgary. Turnbull. Left it for Jenner. Yeah, definitely an offside there. Yeah, I might be pushing for an all the way down call there. <laughs> Zaniak knew exactly that was offside and still chose to play the puck. Six fifty-seven left on the clock here in the third period. Calgary with a six-nothing lead over visiting Toronto. So glad to have you with us today, Sandra Prusina with the Carl, Carla McLeod joining me for color. It's been a good morning. Good crowd here in Calgary. Yeah, I just love to see the continuation and growth of the game. And, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier about the Sportsnet weekend and, you know, certain moments like that. It's starting to, to build for our game. You see these crowds, like my, my folks arrived late. They're here today and they can't find a seat, so that's a good see? thing. See? Standing room okay. only. I like that. Yeah. That's all right. So even the little girls down on the glass, you know, they're getting a front row seat to, to the best athletes in the world in our game. And, and that's, uh, that's growth, and, and it's tremendous. You know, we've got a, 
uh, Gell in the stands here. Even even you think of Jan uh, Sammy Joe Small and the, kind of that generation before us. There's a lady Joanne Brander who played with Calgary Classics way back in the day. You know, and like to see, so they come to these games. So we're getting multiple generations of support, and yeah. and that's how you grow. And uh, and the product is certainly uh, a viable product and an enjoyable one. So, uh, you know, I think we keep pushing, and hopefully the day will come that we have that one league that everyone is, yes. is pushing for, because that's obviously what we need, and uh, and we'll inspire more kids to play. Gosling puts that one wide. I know we're getting to a little bit of chatter here as we <laughs> like call the game, <laughs> but it's. There's just so much, so much excitement here, and looks like we'll get a, a late power play here for Toronto. I'm sure they'd like to put one on the board, get one past Annie Belanger. But nonetheless, just, and I like to look at the crowd because like you said, it's a generational thing, and I see boys and I see girls, and then I see people who might be coming just to their first game, and then they hear these names. That, you know, it's like Natalie Spooner's playing, Rebecca Johnston's playing. I, I can't even imagine I mean, you have two gold medals. Gina's here, Sammy Joe is here, and you guys aren't even on the ice, but the players on the ice, and how many Olympic medals are on the ice right now just blows my mind. Yeah, and, and I think that's the great great part of our game is, is those players are accessible. Great save there by Belanger. Belanger with a couple of back-to-back -back saves here to stifle Toronto on the man advantage. Good chance there by Spooner, you know, right spot, right time, just just missed. But again, kind of how the game's going today, but be happy with where she got that puck. Five minutes left here on the clock in the third period. Toronto with the man advantage, they'll set things up once again. Spooner dumps that puck into the Calgary end. They're actually going for a line change, so Calgary will easily kill some seconds off of this power play for Toronto as Tylee plays it into the corner. She actually didn't start this game, truly started this game. She played 40 minutes for Toronto, was excellent between the pipes for the Furies, but giving her a little bit of break here. Tylee earned the win last night in Red Deer. Stopped 22 of 23 shots. Battle behind the Calgary net, and that'll be played out to the point. Almost kept alive, but Toronto will have to tag up and Calgary will kill some seconds with 36 of them left on the power play. It's an amazing thing in the special teams game within the game, right? And we look at it tonight, like there's just been nothing happening on the power play for, for the Furies all night. And last night it was everything. So it's, you know, I, I think every coach would love to have the secret ingredients because none of us truly know. <laughs> you know, like what changed from last night to the night tonight? You can say that maybe maybe the Inferno made some tweaks on the penalty kill. I, I can't speak to that with any intelligence. But it's funny that the momentum that it can give you on either side of it. And when it's not going in your power play, it's getting chance after chance and it's just not generating. How deflating it truly is for not only the pl players on the power play, but the whole team. Sure. And if you could figure that out, if any coach out there could figure it out, write a book. And, and bottle it up and sell it. <laughs> You'd be making millions. <laughs> yep. 322 left here in the third period. 6 nothing for Calgary over Toronto. Johnston with a chance now. The captain of the Inferno plays it back to the point. Bellamy, that one gets caught up in some skates. Bellamy will have to track back. And now with speed for Gosling. Caitlin Gosling taken down in front of the Toronto bench. As Leslie took down Sarah Nurse, back to the point, Johnston. Johnston looking for some open ice. Lots of Toronto jerseys there. She doesn't have a lot of lanes. Plays it to Decker, in the dot, slap shot. That one was blocked by Spooner. Back to Decker. And Spooner will flick that one out into center ice. Calgary switching out their blue liners, so Pickle will track back and get that. Bounce pants to Leslie. Played over to the wing. And Kelly Murray taken down in the center of the ice. I thought we might see an arm go up there, but it looks like we won't. The ref's probably just trying to move the game along yeah. as well. But nice little jump there by Kelly Murray. Again, this unit doesn't get a ton of ice time on a regular basis, yeah. but. You just hope that when they get their chance, they go out and, and do what they can do. And I, I like her jump there, right? You're going to give the puck up as a defenseman, but then join the play. Why not? And she got it right back and almost had herself a breakaway. 
Darkangelo plays it into the Calgary end. Belanger gets a glove and keeps that play alive under two minutes left here in the third period. Centering pass, nobody there for Toronto. Slap shot by Melissa Channel. That one's deflected into the corner. Referees telling to move the puck, and they do, and Calgary comes away with it. Some speed through the neutral zone. Chance now for Rihanna Curio. Shot on goal. That goes wide. Kept alive. Brianne Jenner taken down. She's got two goals this morning. Now the afternoon. Channel. Well, sorry, it's I had to check my watch. That's been the hardest part of our day. <laughs> it's like, is it morning or is it afternoon? <laughs> Back to Laquette, near the Calgary bench, played to the center of the ice, and we'll get an icing call late here. A minute and a little bit of change here left on the third period. Like again, may maybe not at this level, but I, I don't know, I'd be tempted. Maybe I'd call my time out if I'm Toronto Furies here, and i try to set up a play. Again, it's just an opportunity. Like, what do you have to lose? Exactly. Right, like you've got yeah. nothing to lose. Perhaps maybe at the end of the day, you just want the game to be done. So it's a, it's a coaching preference there's not a right or a wrong by any any stretch of the imagination but just little times you can take advantage of scenarios that maybe in a tight game you couldn't yeah so Calgary with speed through the neutral zone Turnbull looking for some options centering pass to Jenner she's looking for the Hattie but denied by Tylee nice save there Natalie Spooner congratulating her goalie there Greco as well giving her a tap on the pads <laughs> Still smiling, so, th <laughs> so that's good. But yeah, a nice little slide across there by Tylee. Like again, those are the hardest saves to make. It's the furthest distance, and you're moving when the puck hits you. So, you know, good honor for, for scooping that one up. Yeah, great lat lateral movement there by the Toronto goaltender. Shot wide by Calgary. And Toronto now with a chance. Johnston and Spooner colliding near center ice. Spooner will take over. She plays it out in front again. There's that play, and we talked about it for most of the game. She doesn't drive behind the net. She tries to drive out in front. And to be 100% honest, that's that's fairly new in her game. Uh, a lot of times when I watch her with the national team, she, she would drive it wide, and you just think, man, with your size and your speed, take it to the net. Now she's attacking that near post consistently at this level, so hopefully that is the same with the national team because no defenseman in the world want to defend her if that's, that's her mentality. Chance here for Calgary, bounces off the stick of Johnston as she was looking for another point on the afternoon. Slap shot, Tylee, I think just got that off her glove and that should do it. A six nothing win for the Calgary Inferno over the visiting Toronto Furies. The Furies coming out west to Alberta for the first time this season and nothing to be ashamed of because they split this series, which is really important because Calgary has always been a very strong team at home. It's That's actually Calgary's first home loss of the season. Yeah. So Toronto should not leave Calgary with their heads down. They played very well throughout these two games. And I'm certain that would be framed in the, in the dress room post game here today, that at the end of the day, you know, if people were betting on this series, they're going to say, hey, Calgary's going to take two. And that didn't happen. And that was because they played a really strong game yesterday. They defended really well. And again, they took advantage of the the handful of chances they got, and they've got the caliber of player to do it. Yes, they do. You know, and, and, and it's not that they didn't have chances today, they just didn't get maybe the same the same result. And that's the joy of the game. But certainly coming out of here with a split is a, is a, it's a great step for them and something they can build on moving forward. And I think it's really crucial because two years ago, Calgary and Toronto played in the playoffs. It's a best of three, and Toronto won that first game, pushing that series to three. So you never know what can happen. You take that first game. Well, that's it. And that's the joy of sport, and that's why movies are made, and that's why <laughs> miracles are made, and everything else. But you know what? It, it, they're they're not a miracle esque team. They're not. They're right in the mix. Yes, and, they and are. And I think uh, you know you, you get a break. This is the hardest time of the year for for any team too. You're exhausted. Everyone's tired. Everyone wants to be you know thinking of Christmas and moving on. So so for them, like you said, you come out here at the toughest time. You play a, a, a really deep team, a lot of talent, and, and you're one and one. So. Certainly, uh, I think everything's positive moving out. Sometimes in, sometimes in life, you just take a game and you forget about it, too. Yeah. And not that today's game was really awful, but sometimes you just say, well, shoot. Exactly. Just didn't and happen. For Toronto, I think they can use this as a litmus test. When they move forward, they say, well, if we want to beat Calgary on a consistent basis, we need to do A, B, C, and th <laughs> A, B, C, <laughs> and, <three>. and D. <laughs> Sorry. So that's kind of what I'm thinking because... Yeah. 
there were all, I mean that top line of Toronto is a lot of fun to watch I will see them again in January when they're here in the middle of January but to see Sarah Nurse up close I haven't seen her obviously you saw her in Pyeongchang but what a talented rookie she is the best rookie right now in the CWHL well that's right and how many times in this broadcast did you mention oh rookie player rookie player rookie. they're young yeah they're young and if you look at their stats you know if I'm the other te team I'm the coach of the other team I know who I need to shut down Nurse and Spooner, now they're good enough that they still create. But it, as the season goes on here, it's at secondary level. Yeah. And any time you move from one league to the next, so players coming from college entering into the CWHL, it does take half a season. It's a different level. It's a different It's a different rhythm. Yes. And, and so you, you, you factor that in and, and continue to build their confidence as, as like, they're, they're young players, they're rookies, but they've all got international experience. They're very good players. So it's just a matter of sort of that time factor too, that, you know, Toronto's depth will start to rise. Uh, simply because of experience now. Well, I spoke to Caitlin Willoughby, and she's a rookie on the Calgary Inferno. And just talking to her, it was about two weeks ago, and I said, what is the biggest challenge for you? And she said the speed. Like you just said, it's about getting used to the pace of this play because you are playing the best of the best in the world. This isn't, you know, beer league hockey. This is the best. Right, and, and you see it any time you move up a level. I coach midget hockey. So my players that come from Bantam to Midget, there's an adjustment. I graduate them out, they go from Midget to college, it takes time. It's just the reality of the sport. Yeah. And and for the Fury here, Furies, like, you know, the the bones of their game is, is really, really good. They've got a great coaching staff that understand how to explain the game and, and teach the game. You know, and so we always be on the same page. No, it takes time. And confidence. Like goodness gracious, while you're writing the book on you know, goal scoring, write the book on confidence. Yeah. Because that's another factor in the game that it just takes time. So, you know what, for me, like when I watch them play and I watched the game live stream last night, you know, I like the direction they're going and now it's just fine tuning little, little tweaks along the way to, to help bolster that, that top line. Excellent. So I think we'll probably sign off here from Calgary. So great to have you with us, Carla. What a pleasure. It's the first time I've been able to do color with you and learning so much. I hope this isn't the last time you're filling Jenna's shoes. It's usually Jenna yes. and myself. And it's, it's so neat to obviously hear your perspective and you've, did you play with Rebecca Johnston? I did. You did, right? Yeah. So you do have some experience playing with these players, and obviously they've helped you through coaching and all this. So we're just paying it forward here. <laughs> it's been awesome, and thanks so much for you oh. uh, for joining this broadcast too, and, and what a treat to have uh, your talents. Oh, it's my pleasure, and hopefully we didn't annoy the Toronto fans too much. I, I hope you guys, I do apologize if... Email Sammy if we did. Yeah, <laughs> let her. But uh, <laughs> on behalf of myself and uh, on behalf of Carla and everybody here in Calgary, we want to wish everybody in Toronto happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and we will see you in the new year. Thank you for tuning in.